Morning, everyone. Welcome to Scribble Time. Uh, I'm your host, Nolan, and we're going to be drawing with real pencils and paper today. So that's why the camera is a little bit shaky because I'm actually holding it. So I'm going to uh, get my sketch pad out and my pens and paper, and we'll get started right away. So uh, just give me a second, and we'll. All right, now we're back with uh, our sketch pad here. So what I have planned today is just going to be doing a bunch of doodling. And I just wanted to show uh, how I would go about drawing. And I don't want it to be all about, um, you know, having to do digital and be all perfect with it. Even though my drawings haven't been that perfect, it has, uh, you know, I know it's a little bit hard for some t uh, some people, some of you, to follow me if I'm uh, constantly erasing and redoing things. So uh, I'm going to be joining you guys just like this, and we'll be, um, you know, we'll be drawing to uh, and just sketching it ahead. So uh, I want to show just a few of the tools that I like to use when I'm drawing uh, traditionally. One of them is I use a lighter lead um, when I'm drawing to help get an underdrawing. So what I use is a, I have this drafting pencil here. Now you don't have to have a drafting pencil because um, it's just some of the materials that I've inherited over the years. My uh, my dad was an architect and my brother was older brother was an architect and so um, I inherited some uh, of those drafting supplies. And actually, uh, my wife was an architect, um, so uh, I'm surrounded by architects for some reason, and. Uh, but what that led, um, what that provided me was uh, some experience around some art materials. So, for example, um, these are drafting pencils, and so you would have uh, you would have you know a, a metal sh uh, shaft here, and then you could just fill it up with lead. In this case, I use this uh, red um, pencil lead that I picked up a long time ago while I was in New York. There was an art store that was closing and I just came across it and I just decided just to pick up a cartridge. And so what you would do is you would squeeze the pencil like this and then uh, this section would protrude and act like a hand and basically it would grab the lead. And so if you need more lead, you would just push the, the top of the pen and the lead would come right out. So um, I still have plenty of it, but I kind of like using it. Most of the time, you, what you see in drawing books is that some people would be using um, blue uh, pencil, and that's pretty common too. I think it's one, one of the reasons why people like using blue pencil is because if you were to photocopy it, then the lines don't show up as much. But these days, scanners are really good, so um, you can draw really light and then adjust it digitally uh, to get a better, um, to get, to make the, underdrawing lines disappear so you wouldn't really need to see it see what's uh, underneath and really show the black lines so a lot of times what you see is you'll see people drawing with a, a light underdrawing with a pencil like so so I'm just gonna do something um, to demonstrate that so for example if you're to draw say a panda uh, let's see I was out throwing paper airplanes today so I'm going to draw a panda throwing paper airplanes. So what I would do is I would do these very light sketches. And it is a little bit uh, uh, tricky to see because the camera is not showing up as much. But I'm going to draw just a, you know, I'm just going to just kind of show you the process of it. So um, basically I would do a similar thing as I would do digitally. I would just, um, you know, try to map out. and show you how to put down an underdrawing. So I'm just like putting this down. I'm trying to figure out things. And the temptation at this stage is to draw really hard as if you're drawing with the real pencil. Um, if you're using an underdrawing like this, I recommend doing something really light. And so uh, usually this is pretty good for 
if you're trying to draw really complicated scenes and you need something to plan out. Uh, these days I normally do that in, in Photoshop uh, or digitally because if you're just constantly drawing and erasing over and over again, uh, you're just going to start tearing up the paper. And so, um, actually, I'm going to have them run. I'll, I'll, I'll have them running like that. Okay. All right. So you see a very light, faint, um, faint image here. Let me lower my light a little bit to show you more. You should see some very faint lines, and that's what you would use to guide your drawing. Um, when I was starting out with art and when I was younger, I would try to get everything down as perfectly as I can. And then what I would do is I would get go over it with like a, a darker pencil. So in this case, this is a uh, this is a Palomino uh, black wing. This is a um, it's a fancier pencil, um, not something I would recommend for people who are just starting out. Uh, just a regular drawing pencil is fine because if you're just starting out and you're just drawing for fun, um, usually this is it, it's it's important to just keep drawing and getting the repetition down. And and you can draw with anything like a, a you know ballpoint pen or a, you know. But these are some of the materials that I like to use, and I can provide links to these um, in the description below once I um, you know once I this video is uploaded. Uh, there's also things like uh, Sharpies. Uh, here is one pen. It's called a Pentel um, uh, brush pen. And what it is, it's, a, it's basically, so when, with any kind of brush, or with any, sorry, with any kind of pen, you know, if I take a ballpoint pen here, for example, and, um, you know, just unscrew it, or if, let me, yeah, you unscrew the pen. You Normally, if you just, if you've, if you've ever been bored, well, let me try to find another one. If you ever been bored and you're just tinkering around with your pens, you know you notice that there's always this cartridge here. If you take out the spring, if you disassemble, disassemble a pen, there's always a cartridge showing um, the ink in the pen. And basically, by press, putting pressure on here on the tip of the pen, the ink will flow out. Uh, so similarly, that's the same you know mechanic as as this brush pen, except with the addition of these vinyl brushes. Uh, there's a vinyl brush at the end. So here's a regular ballpoint pen. Um, it's from Muji. I like using those. Here is one. So this is kind of broken, but normally this plastic thing doesn't come out like that. But you can see here, uh, this pen is very, um, yeah, it's very fine tip. It's a flexible tip. So if I took this piece of paper and I showed you, like if I press down the pen tip, pushes down like so and then you can create some really pressure sense really interesting and neat uh, lines in quality so you can go from very thin to very thick and you can also do some um, scuffing as well of the brush to give some pretty cool effects and uh, it's relatively cheap it's uh, I think it's only like 13 or might be might be 16 dollars now but um, there's also reusable cartridges too so if you run out of ink um, you can always detach this and whoop oh, I got almost got ink on me um, and put and fill it up I use a syringe and uh, I fill it up with ink uh, I use speedball um, just because I just wanted to get just a big bottle of it but I could also switch it out too I want to recommend uh, Sumi uh, or at least the the Sumi ink that I use um, because it tends to clog the, the brush head so I've um, I drawn this and, oh yeah, and by the way, feel free to uh, you know get, uh, send any questions in the chat uh, as I'm doing this. But uh, basically, I wanted to kind of, to start doing this as a regular thing where I'm drawing in um, in traditional materials. Traditional is that what is what we would call it. And so um, let's let's also get back to our panda here. So I'm going to use a the pencil here just to kind of show. What that will look like then i can also do other examples using um, other types of medium so so i'm just going to do this you know pencil is uh can be tricky at first i mean it's the thing that we all start with start with drawing because like that's the 
most readily available um, drawing utensil at our disposal that's pretty consistent and you know you you have to if you're in school you know you have to take your scantron test with the number two pencil and so forth and uh, so you you know so you're always constantly using pencils but you know the, the tricky thing is that we don't necessarily use pencils correctly because um, we don't you know we're not really we're just kids just starting out and we're not really learning the principles of um, design and how to draw and so you can see how like it's darker um, you know some people draw differently the um, you know like I hold my pencil like this where I rest the pencil on my middle finger whereas some people um, they kind of do it like this where they squeeze it between their middle finger and their ring finger like that and um, there's not really a right or wrong way I mean if I were to teach people to, to or teach my son how to draw or how to hold a pencil you know I would obviously do it this way because that's what I'm used to um, by the way this little thing on the bottom of my hand that's kind of like gross looking is um, I burned myself baking pizza the other the other day so it's a little bit um, it's healing up it just doesn't look very appetizing at the moment um, yeah I just grabbed the pan way too or I grabbed the pan and um, didn't realize that the pot holder I was using uh, was a little bit too short <laughs> so I ended up grabbing a, a grabbing the hand uh, a handle that was about 500 degrees Fahrenheit <laughs> no that wasn't too smart uh, oh yeah I was gonna make him run so let's let's have him run okay so you see like in some ways it's just building it up um, obvious let me just be a little bit more bold and um, I would always recommend being bold so um, you know build with pencils it's kind of fun like because it's a sketch and I'm not really too worried about the um, you know minimizing my brush strokes there's a number of different ways like if you look at Dr. Seuss for example like yesterday's stream if you want to check out that video um, you'll see that a lot of his style is kind of using a lot of cross hatching and he has a very distinctive um, very distinctive style because of that but um, you know that's what he's developed and it's not it's the way that he's learned to draw and it's not necessarily what, how everybody should draw but that what works for him so I think that's um, oh so the nice thing about pencil of course is that you can erase so I kind of flubbed there because I'm trying to draw um, him using a paper airplane so he's uh, a nice I was using paper airplanes because my son and I were just uh, out throwing paper airplanes this morning he wanted to go outside it's a relatively nice day good morning and uh, now he's back inside watching cartoons because <laughs> okay there's another instance where I I'm not thinking correctly and a lot of this is uh, thinking you'll, you'll hear me talk a lot a lot about um, mentioning uh, I'm not thinking correctly and so one of the other things as I'm drawing this I, I forgot to mention is that um, usually with pencils they have a, they have a designation with them and so the um, with pencils they, there's a thing called hardness where the pencils, um, the, the 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 hardness of the num of the pencil is uh, determined by the number that's listed on it. So, a two B pencil is um, is the standard that's being used. But then the, the usually I think the the lower or the, sorry the the higher the number, the harder it is. Or the higher the higher the number, the softer it is. So, if you're using a two B, an H is I think harder than um, an H is harder than what's t uh, what's specified as B. So if you have Bs, they definitely are a lot. Um, or sorry, let me go back to that. The higher the H, <laughs> the harder it is. The higher the B, 
the softer it is. So um, B's are softer than H's, and so a 2H is harder than an H. That makes sense. So this is a, um, a 602. I think this is a B pencil, so this is a pretty soft pencil. But one of the things I wanted to say was um, when you're doing with pencils, uh, you'll notice that after a while, if you're just drawing, you're in, you know, my hand is all over this pe paper, uh, you might get some smearing. So I can already see that there's a tiny bit of smearing going on um, in this area where my hand's been dragging. So sometimes what I like to do when I'm drawing is to, you know, get a piece of paper, or in this case, this is a piece of card, leftover cardboard that I have. And so you use that to kind of protect your drawing away from your hand. So that way um, you get something like this. So it's uh, a little tip. A lot of tips are just, you know, just things that are just kind of common sense. Like after a while, it's like my hand's getting smudged. Maybe I should put something under my hand. Uh, another thing too is when I, like you notice this is a, this is about a, a nine by 12 sheet of paper. I like drawing on big pieces of paper because um, you it's easier on your hand because if you're drawing tiny uh, you're using a lot of wrist but if you're drawing big strokes you're using more of your shoulder and that's a little bit easier on your uh, on your body because if you're doing this a lot with your in and you know doing a lot of details with your wrist you're gonna get a little bit more pain here and that's gonna cause um, problems down the road so uh, anyway, so um, one thing to, to notice with pencils that, you know, you have a sharp tip. Uh, you don't always have to draw with just the exact tip. You can always, you, what you can do is you can lean and tilt the pencil a bit more. And by tilting it, you're, um, you're getting a thicker uh, surface area to color your, to color your um, drawing. So what I like to do here is, you know, if I tilt it on the side, I can get a much wider um, area to shade and that allows me to shade things a little bit easier because if I shade it with the tip, one, it's going to be darker f for sure, but it's also going to be a little bit harder. So like if I shaded like this piece of paper and I did like this, um, it's not going to give me the, that texture that I want uh, if I'm shading it on the side because it's a little bit lighter. But if you want to darken it, of course, you just go through and you, um, you know, you you go over it again to make sure that uh, you know, to give it that value. So I'm just going to go here, give this dark value here. So that's what I like about these pencils is that they are very, they're pretty soft, and they can. Um, they're pretty soft. And they allow you to just throw down some tone that's pretty quickly. The tricky thing though with like if you're drawing with like a 2, 2B pencil, um, you can still do it. It's just that 2Bs, uh, I mean not 2Bs, uh, or yeah, 2B pencils are soft. They're not as soft as the one that I'm using right now. So you may find that you're not getting quite the right tone. And it, part of it is just, um, it's just having some patience with you know shading like don't feel like you have to get completely black you have to kind of build it up a little bit so just you know take your time so you might notice that um, normally when I'm doing shading I like to kind of do it all in one direction to kind of give it um, an evenness because um, but you saw me doing uh, turning the paper there and sometimes it's, it's I wanted to just get that in there so um, I'm just gonna th go through here just darken up some of the outlines you know here I'm kind of using my wrist to, to draw more you know, in this area because I need more finer detail but I need to make sure that you know I'm pretty thorough with that so yeah so um, when I'm drawing that it's you know you can get a lot of control just with shading tones here I want to make this arm feel a little bit like it's behind so I'm gonna add a little bit of shadow there so I'm just gonna just go over this again I'm not pressing very hard one because this uh, pencils pretty soft but um, you'll notice that as I um, the more I do this the more that you'll see that 
this is gonna feel a little bit darker. Now let me uh, rotate my light a little bit so that you can see because there's a little bit of reflection because there's a, there's a bit of a sheen on the lead. You know, there's a certain point when you like when you're pointing a light on pencil that it's going to kind of look a, a bit reflective because it's made out of graphite. And graphite is if you got a ball of graphite, you know, there's some re re reflectivity to it. Okay. So I'm going to just go over here again, just shade this a little bit more just to so can give Oh, see I actually made a made an error there where I just um, my pencil caught the, uh, the the smudge board that that I was using and um, kind of made a little bit darker but that's okay so with the softer pencil actually what's kind of nice too is that you can actually go in and smudge the drawing too if you want later on and you can use that to great effect uh, I can show that a little bit later here but let me just uh, go through this first, kind of just even this out. Um, I'm going to add a little bit of shadow here for the glove. You know, maybe just clean up this edge here because it doesn't look very confident. Okay. for his tongue just not too much just light just lightly a little bit okay and then here I'm gonna add a little bit of shadow for the airplane just the undercarriage there one right there and then See, it's really not much, I mean, when it comes to just drawing, it's like there's, uh, it's just a, it's just patience. You just, um, you know, obviously if you want to get faster, sure. Um, if you, it, that just comes with practice, like you just, you know, just naturally be more confident in what you're doing. And you're also, you know, getting used to being more comfortable with your materials. But, um, you know, even today is like I'll, I'll when I'm drawing, I'm always encountering different challenges that makes it feel like I'm trying to draw, learn how to draw all over again. So be patient with yourself if you're trying to draw and you're just you know you feel like you're struggling. Um, you're always going to be struggling because you're always going to be searching for that next big thing that the next. Um, you're always going to have a goal towards what you're drawing, so whether you. Because, like, for example, if you want to really get good at drawing people, that's always going to be your goal. And once you get better at drawing people, you're not going to you're not going to sit there and be like, "Oh, I'm." When you get to drawing people a certain way, you're like, "Oh, I'm I'm happy with this." Like, there's going to be an itch to to always make it better, to make it different, to, you know, to move beyond what you have. And certainly, some people if can create a style like peanuts and draw your characters like that forever but you know even then it's like peanuts those characters changed from the since the um the very beginning like they're the drawings when they first the way that they're drawn based on the way they the way that they were drawn when they first came out is much different than what it is today and uh, that kind of came over years and years of practice and it's like well a certain you know you you don't feel like you know you're not content with drawing it just one way it, it, it changes because you, you're getting better too and so um you know my pandas started out a certain way and they they're now very different okay so i'm just shading in this glove like that okay and then you could also uh draw shadow here too if you want I'm gonna just be a little bit looser sometimes it's nice just to have um, a little bit of smudging to kind of show that like there's an illusion that 
like you, you're kind of reminding people that it's drawn with a pencil, so you'll have like these things. Uh, I'll show you a little bit of smudging. So smudging is, um, I won't do a lot of it now because it gets pretty messy, but it's like I take my thumb, right, and I'll just like move from the dark to the light. And you'll see that, um, you can't see it at first, but you'll begin to notice at some point, like it'll start softening the image. And uh, it's easier to do this obviously with, um, with softer lead. Harder lead is much harder to do it, but uh, I'm just gonna keep myself in the, uh, the darker areas here to kind of you know, not get too messy with it. But you'll see here, like my thumb is already getting a little bit black. I'm just gonna get some water just to, to rinse that off. Because then it can get everywhere. Um, okay. I mean, I'm not too worried about inge ingesting it because, I don't know, wasn't there a thing with charcoal, like pastries and stuff? Like people were putting charcoal and swirls of char charcoal in their donut croissants and stuff like that. I don't know. We certainly have very interesting food trends. I do hear though that you gotta be careful with that because if you're trying to eat medicine, for example, if you need to take some medicine, uh, the graphite would or the uh, charcoal would just suck up all the um, all the medicine, absorb all the medicine, so it wouldn't work. Uh, in this case, though, this is graphite, not charcoal, but um, kind of re reminding me of that. Charcoal is way messier, and you kind of have to be a little bit more, um, I think, disciplined with it. It has some really cool effects, but for but for sure, yeah. So this is the the way I would draw a panda. You can see that the red lines are pretty much, um, it, according to the camera, uh, the way that the camera is reading is, is, it's pretty non-existent. Um, like if I can bring it up closer, you might be able to see some a uh, hint of red, but that's the, um, you know, that's the byproduct of it. And what you can do after that is you can you know, sign your drawing, always sign your drawing. Come up with a cool signature that is uh, easy to draw and quick to, you know, that's really, just, just, um, that looks good, but it's also easy easy to draw because if you're, you know, if you get world famous or something like that, then, um, you know, and you're signing a ton of stuff, it helps to have a simpler signature. Not that I'm, I'm not super famous, but I've had to sign like a hundred books before, and it gets a little bit tiring after a while. If you if you have a, if you don't have a good, um, if you don't have a good signature, let's see, something's wrong. There's some banding going on with my camera, so I have to, have to figure out what's going on. Let me see if I can change the exposure. Look at so. There we go. I think it might be because of my light. <laughs> I think my light has a certain um, frequency that's going on. Okay, so let's um, let's draw something else. I'm gonna use the red pencil again to kind of show. Uh, you don't. The more you do this, the more you draw, the less you need to rely on the red pencil. So, um, so but I'm just gonna. I don't know. I don't have an idea in my mind. I'm trying to think of one. I'm going to. Um, you know, I like drawing pandas eating. Raw, uh, soups, soup noodle. So I'm gonna do that then. It's pretty. It's something I've done multiple times, and it's, you know, you kind of get comfortable with it. Usually on commissions, I'm a little bit tighter on this. I'm, I'm basically, I try to, you know, really knock it out of the park, so I don't. Because on these uh, sketches, sometimes that might be off model, or I'm um, not thinking, or I'm trying to, you know, improve the drawing after I, you know, after I do the initial sketch. Because um, I'm not sticking. Usually, I try not to stick with the first drawing, but um, with my commissions, they tend to be because I I, I lower the price, but. Um, you know, for f something fancier, I'll, I'll definitely do more exploration because uh, if I'm spending a lot of time on this drawing, I want to make sure I get it right. And uh, sometimes it's, 
I'm kind of running into this right now with the book I'm working on um, for myself where I I illustrated a good portion of it but I think I need to change some of it and so I've already spent enough time a lot of time doing the art and now I'm you know that's just time gone so I need to kind of deal learn my lesson and not like go so gung-ho because I thought the story was like was working pretty well so I went through and and but I probably rushed the story a little bit and as a result I realized that the story is not working or at least um, is not working quite as it could be and so it kind of made me a little bit discouraged in the sense like oh I sh you know I wish I did more thumbnailing or maybe I should like flesh out the story and talk to, to some other people more um, to kind of get their opinion because like um you know, when I when I went through and, and did that, put that much work into the book, um, it's a uh, it's a little bit, <laughs> yeah, it's not it's not a good practice to do that, because rarely, very rarely does a story like come out right on the first try. Um, that's pretty impossible, and usually people can tell like if it's if it feels like a first draft. Um, well, let me let me say that again. Let me rephrase that. Uh, it's rare that a good that a good story can come out on the first draft. Because uh, stories have been written on first drafts before, but um, definitely you can definitely tell when it's not feeling as great. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is <clears throat> I'm going to go through and use a, a different pen here. And I think I will use, well, I'll show the brush pen, um, but you can use any kind of marker too. Uh, the brush pen is, I just wanna show just how, uh, how it works. But basically you just, um, it's a flexible tip. So you have to try to draw a little bit lightly. So, so I, might, I might mess up a lot on this one, but oh well. I like to start with the face to kind of get loosen me up. Well, I don't know. Maybe it's just a face. Like I just feel like I just need to get that done first, and that kind of sets the tone for the rest of the drawing. Paper, actually, for in terms of paper, this is um. This is like some old, this is an old sketch pad that I had back in the day where um, this is something that my parents gave me and uh, it's like two bucks. And it's, the paper quality is not that great. So like the way that the ink is, is getting absorbed into the paper is not quite ideal. I like using watercolor paper. Um, for these guys, I actually use hot press watercolor paper. I know a lot of people don't really, um, they don't really like hot press, but I think given the type of detail that I work on, I think it, uh, cause I started out with cold press and um, I think just for what these guys, the kind of, the style that these guys are in, they kind of, I think hot press works a little bit better in my opinion. But you know, I'm, uh, I'm only using hot press right now because um, you know I, I bought I would buy them in big sheets and so I need to I need to use them up. So to show little things, um, I like to when I'm inking I usually like to go from the top left to the top right or to the bottom right because if I do some inking right here and then I go up here and do some inking I'm gonna smudge it with my hand. So um, like, like, I, like we talked about earlier, it helps to do, um, to have like a little smudge thing because even if you put down some ink, uh, that's no guarantee that you're not gonna smudge. But um, with this ink, it's, um, it doesn't smudge quite as much. The other ones I also use, they're, they're, the Sumi ink, they, um, 
they can smudge if you're not careful if, if you just lay it down really thick but if you just give it time to dry it ends up being um, ends up being waterproof later so it's not too not too big a deal Okay. Then what helps is to go like this. Yeah, so you can kind of see like if you go up close, the paper is pretty um like where the ink is being absorbed into the paper, it's looking kind of fuzzy. It's because this, this paper is not really made for ink. It's probably made for more for, well, one, it's cheap and just more suitable for pencil. Okay, then you just go like that. And, and if you're wondering, yes, I'm, I can have these. Uh, I'll, I'll scan these and, and put them on, on the Scribble Time website for you guys to, you know, to color in later I guess it's uh, I'm already coloring in a bunch um, but you guys if you guys want to just print it out and put it in your home uh, you guys can do that too also if you guys would like to you know have any suggestions for like I I have a red bubble account um, for t-shirts I also uh, I need to update that store in a little bit but uh, if there's something in particular you guys are looking for for your homes because we're spending a lot of time in our a lot of time in our homes so it probably would help to like it's probably for a lot of people they're probably looking to beautify it and so uh, if you got any suggestions for um, types of art or types of products you want to see uh, feel free to just uh, message me or comment below we can get that get that squared away. I'm gonna bring that. I'm gonna leave that seaweed in there. It's gonna eat a bowl of ramen. Maybe I can do uh, <laughs> these drawings as a giveaway for future future episodes. Okay, uh, so let me just shade this a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna add some some sheet of nori in here because it's he's eating some ramen some overlap maybe some fish cake i'll just add some naruto here the fish cake not the boy that'd be kind of weird hmm. Like to add a little bit of noodles they're kind of just poking out of the surface there and yeah and then we'll just close this up it's kind of keeping that open because i wasn't sure how i was going to resolve that but uh yeah then you just fill it just color by the numbers get all the darks out and you could do this with markers you could do it with crayons what have you crayons are a little bit um challenging because they don't get quite as dark you know like I like ink because you can throw down some pretty heavy lines and values that make it for um, you know very visually striking images so that's why that's why I 
I like doing ink a lot. Which is strange because I never thought I would like be into into that medium. But you know, you try out different things and you you see what you like and um, you learn new things. Like I never liked spicy food for the longest time and then now I can't get enough of it. <laughs> okay, so there we have it, our, our ink drawing. And then what you can do afterwards, like sometimes what I like to do with the red the red pencil, you can't see a lot of lines. You can kind of see this red tone to it. But what I like to do is maybe just go through and actually, um, actually shade it in. Now this isn't going to give me the um, the flat side as I do with the regular pencil. So if I had a reg, if I had like a red pencil by my by my table right now, I could do that. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to just be really patient and just um, shade. Um, with the thinner tip here, but be a little bit more patient as I'm doing it. Because you're basically just building it up as you go, like so. Okay. And then here I can add a little bit, I can also paint this too and put the paint, his, uh, his body into shadow. I can add sh little sh bits of shadow here and there to kind of add some depth to it. Um, make certain things disappear. Let's add. Um, I forgot to make that seaweed dark, so let's. Okay, and then we could add a little bit. Let's show some holes with the noodles. You can shade the noodles too if you like. Just shade some individual strands, like so. I'll give it to mansion and I'll co color the broth just a little bit add some texture okay yeah and then I'm just gonna go back here just to like shade this again just get that signature boxing glove a little bit um, a little bit more dimension Okay, so there you have it. There's a, um, we have our ink drawing here. Let me just kind of rotate a little bit better. So that's our ink panda. Oh, and I forgot to sign it too. Like so. All right, I think we got time for one more drawing. So thanks a lot for hanging out, guys. Um, I'll be posting these drawings on my website at punchingpandas.com slash scribble time. Let's draw, let's just draw something a little bit more random. Uh, so this time I'm gonna draw with a Sharpie. And the Sharpie, of course, is a permanent marker, but I'm, I'm gonna show just drawing without any red pencil. So um, let's see here. This one's kind of dried out, so I'm going to use this one. This is a, but I just want to show just that you can draw uh, just using pretty much anything. And it, it can be a Sharpie. Uh, we can just go, let's see. So in my mind, I'm just, I'm kind of just laying out, um, I'm kind of treating this as a pencil a little bit. So there's a little bit of scuffiness there, but then. You know, I'm kind of thinking in my mind what what's this going to look like, but I'm not too worried about it being perfect. Um, obviously, I've drawn the panda sitting down a lot, so um, this kind of helps a bit. So, like I said, it's practice makes perfect. You know, you just keep drawing things over and over again. You get used to it. Obviously, keep pushing yourself if you're you know, because if you're drawing something um, badly and you keep doing it over again, you're not really gonna get any better. Um, so you're constantly trying to improve, trying to find um, new ways to, and more efficient ways sometimes to draw so you're not spending too much time. You know, like if I'm, 
if I really love drawing leaves, um, you know, more power to me, I guess. But uh, if I'm drawing like a scene with trees and stuff, I don't, you know, I'll, I'll spend the time to to make sure those trees look great. But they're not, unless they're the the um, the most important part of that of the art. I'm not going to really try to spend too much time on them because I need to, you know, it's kind of like you're trying to determine priorities. <laughs> so I'm just going to add some texture here. Like so, and then here I can just add little spots. It's, you know, this is a pretty, Simple shape at the bottom. See, so I'm I'm just using a dried out sharpie, and I'm still able to, you know, still able to draw. And, you know, I'm just um, putting these circles in places where not they're not going to interfere with the panda too much. Okay. See, there's like a line going right through the the panda's belly, but I'm not too worried about it because I'm I'm trying to. I'm trying to just get the the main idea across. Like if I draw some of these lines, some of these forms a little bit thicker, and just maybe walk, make the line width feel that way. Eventually, you're not going to notice certain details because um, you just keep redrawing certain things like that. Normally, a sharpie wouldn't be this. Um, wouldn't be this dry but because it's this dry I'm able to use it in a certain way that you normally wouldn't if it was fully charged okay um, let's draw okay just draw little little butterflies and leaves and grass and such we've been doing some weeding lately lately in our garden or in our front yard and it's like all I can think about right now is just weeds I have these weeds where as soon as you pick them up they like explode all their all the pods that contain all their seeds in the stem just explode so you have to like you have to really be careful and take them up as gently as you can but you know either way they still drop off a few seeds here and there so it's pretty frustrating I'm like oh these these things okay so there's one uh, let me do another one because I think I have time for one more because that was pretty quick. But I also want to show, um, so this is a dried out Sharpie. Let's use something that doesn't feel, you know, that that you want to, um, let's see. I don't know what this pen is. Let's see what this pen is about. I'm gonna check it out. Always test out. Uh, it's a bit thin. Probably not, but uh, let's see. Here, I'll draw with the crayon. All right, for those of you with crayons, uh, I have one green crayon here. Let's try to make it work. Let's draw a green panda. Let's draw um, Let's draw I'm Just thinking in my mind, how about we draw uh, I just recently drew this so maybe I'll draw it again. So panda, so this is going to be pretty interesting. Maybe I might use this as an underdrawing, okay? Um, so this guy's pretty green. Um, obviously, it's a blunt point, so it's actually really good for um, doing rough, rough drawings. So I think the more precise you need to be, the, the finer the tools need you need to have. So I'm just going to just go like this, maybe. 
Hmm. Actually, let's, let's push, push it over here. So I kind of messed up a little bit, but that's okay because uh, I'm just... Uh, I just want to show you guys that you don't have to have everything perfect. It has to be just, you know, is it communicating the thing that you're trying to tell your viewer? Okay. Okay, so he's going to have his arm like that. Then I'm going to go through with a different marker. Let's just try something different here. Uh, this one might be dried out. Let's try it. I have an old Prismacolor that I'm going to draw with. So um, I'm going to use a chisel tip. So these uh, are alcohol-based uh, markers, which are great because um, they can lay down uh, a certain tone and keep it pretty consistent. This one's black because, and obviously it would, it would stay black, but if you had like a light gray, um, like 50% and you kept drawing it over and over again, like it would stay at, at about 50%. Obviously you'll probably saturate your paper and blow it out, but uh, you know, let's just, I, I won't uh, go over that. So let's just draw this here. It's actually a lot of fun because I haven't really drawn with traditional materials for a while. So I guess this one isn't quite dry, so dried out. This is nice because it has a chisel tip, so um, for fine uh, lines and details, you can do uh, really fine line work. And then if you want to do something a little bit more rough, you can just go on this side. So like for example, if I just draw his glove here, Draw this little there. So you can see that it, it goes by really quick. So I'm just gonna set my um, my boundaries here with the, the panda. Okay. And so with the thick, I can go through and, and like put in some really thick lines, really thick tone. That really helps a lot with just throwing it down. So th th these are actually really good for like concept, where you just have to draw really quickly. Um, I mean, this is what they used back in the day. Or, I mean, they used markers like this back in the day for like old movies when you know they had to do concept art for like Star Wars and you know. The Matrix and all these other films, like even, I mean, they still do that today. It's um, and it kind of just depends on the preference of the um, the artist. But digital at least allows you to make modifications a lot easier than say, you know, with the marker drawing, you have to like repaint, redraw all over again. But there is some um, textural qualities to um, markers and just traditional media in general that just sometimes it can just make for happy accidents right okay now we're just going to draw this last part here uh, just draw a little tip here map that out okay got some little ticks here some overlap to kind of show that there's other stuff going on here. To kind of give that three dimensional quality to it. Okay. And then um, we could do things like, uh, I don't know, let's, let's make this a little bit interesting. How about we do a different color that's not normally associated with rain? And that would be, you know, let's use orange. You know, I have an orange marker here. I'm just going to show. Uh, this is a Copic marker, so it's also an um, 
these are refillable as well. They're a little bit more expensive um, because uh, but they have a flexible tip and they also have a chisel tip as well. So these are really cool. But I wouldn't recommend starting out with these. I would just say like just draw with whatever you have and if you have the money to try experimenting with these later, um, you can do so. But um, you know, I wouldn't you know get this for your if you if you have kids, you know, if you're trying to get them into art, I wouldn't recommend these right off the bat until probably a little bit later uh, once they have a little bit more interest because these are not that cheap compared to say buying um, you know same buying a, a coloring set at like Walmart or something like that not endorsing Walmart I'm just saying uh, for example you know uh, so you'll see that I'm gonna go and rotate myself and instead of rotating the paper I'm just gonna go like this really um, this really helps me to draw straight lines a lot easier so it's a lot easier to draw it this way than kind of going like this up and down because you don't really have that much control but this way you're using um, your shoulder to draw uh, I'm kind of run I'm actually running into my keyboard and my tablet right now so um, But see, even though we use, um, oh, that was weird. It kind of bleed, bled out on me. Uh, even though uh, we're using orange here, it's kind of a, oh my goodness. I think my pen is actually bleeding out. It's been a while since I used this. So um, yeah, not good. But you know, I'm going to create some interesting effects. I'll see here. Part of that is just, you know, if something's not working right away, you kind of just adapt. I think in this case, though, it's actually getting pretty heavy here. So I'm just going to kind of get, get these guys out. Yeah. What's up, Hector? Yeah, thanks for uh, chiming in. Maybe add some overlap here. Anyways, and then you sign it, and that's what you... Oh, I can't even sign this. This thing's just bleeding out like crazy on me. Well, let me just try to go in here and just go... Ch -ch -ch before it blobs out. All right, well, I'm going to have to address that pen. So anyways, uh, thanks a lot, guys, for hanging out with, punching pan uh, with me punching pandas. I'm just going to sign this guy here. So these will be available on the um, at Scribble Time. Um, at punchypandas.com slash scribble time uh, you know we we worked on a pencil drawing we worked on uh, let's see. we got our pencil panda we got our um, brush pen panda we have our sharpie panda and we finally have our um, various markers panda <laughs> so hope you guys enjoyed it uh, it's, it's it was I hope to do more of these again so that because um, it's always fun to switch it up and so let me just this is crayon with various markers I'm just gonna color this a little bit to kind of give it a bit more um, interesting interest you know and so all right you guys have a great rest of the day and I'll catch you guys at the next scribble time tomorrow at uh, 11 a.m. Pacific time with that said, you guys have a great day and keep it on drawing.